So does Halacha expect you as an employer to give your employee a farewell gift when he leaves working for you? That's going to depend on a debate in the Gemara about the gift that is given to an Eved Ivri, a Jewish slave, at the end of his service. We're going to see the insights of the Rambam and the Sefer HaChinuch that appear to be different, but actually are not. The mitzvah, which is recorded in this week's parish, that you have to give a gift to an Eved Ivri when you let him free. State in Sefer HaChinuch, the Sefer HaChinuch on our parish, says as follows. As choch, mi is mechuyiv and the mitzvah nor bisman shahayov al noyeg. Even though that is a mitzvah that is only relevant in the time when we commemorated the yovel every fifty years, which is when all the Jewish people lived in Eretz Yisrael. Val bisman shahayov al noyeg is nitod the din from every every because if there's no yovel, there cannot be a Jewish slave. One of the ways the Jewish slave goes free is in the yovel year. So the mitzvah is technically not applicable nowadays. However, says the Sefer Achinuch, there's a way where it could apply. We could learn from this that even today, Yishma Chochom Yosef Lekach, person who's wise, should pay attention and take a lesson from this. Sheim Socham Ibn Yisrael, that if you hire a Jewish person to work for you, and he works for you, whether it's a long or even a short period of time, you should give him a gift when he leaves your employ, showing the bracha that Hashem has given you. So there you have it. There's a concept of giving a gift to an employee. Zokter of the Minchas Chinuch, as we know, the Minchas Chinuch expands on the Sefer HaChinuch, who analyzes the mitzvahs in every parish, and he tells us, as those as we can open for mitzvahs and nochem and again to a sochi brisman as this is the Minchas Chinuch. How do we derive from the story of an eved to a an employee in the modern world? As mitzad musoroi hatayfun and maskir dafim ma'inik zayin b'tzeisi me'imoy says the Minchas Chinuch. The first insight is that it's it's an appropriate way to behave. It's Musar Hatoyev. It's a good way to conduct yourself, to give somebody a gift when they leave your employ. Says the Mincha Sinach, however, is no loit de dea. That's only according to the opinion in the Gemara, uh, the opinion of Rabbi Lozer in Kiddushin, which says, as the Chiv von Anokis dos sai by an Evid was bezin in Hotim Farkoyft, on sai by an Evid was Farkoyft Sechalein. There's an opinion. Rabbi Lozer says that who gets this gift when they finish the service as an Evid? Every Eved Ivri, whether he sold himself out of poverty or whether the based in sold him because he was in trouble, couldn't repay uh, something he had stolen. Ober says the Minchas Sinach Ever Loite Der the Tanakama's opinion as mitzvah Sanoke is gizok yivor nor by an Eved Shemachru best in that the only type of Eved who gets the gift after his service is the Eved who was sold by based in. But the Gemara lent up lent us up from pasuk Hanek Tanik Loi Loi Veloi Lo Meicher Atzmoi. So the Gemara learns it out of a nuance in the Pasuk that the gift has to be given to him, him meaning somebody who was put into the position by the base and not somebody who volunteered into the position by selling himself. Therefore, it's doch the time for mitzvah sanokah nit mitzvah ha-musar. So therefore, the Minchas Chinuch says, if you go with the Tana Kama's opinion, the reason that you give this gift to the Eved when he leaves is not because of your moral conscious, conscience and the way that you should behave. Or mi yodea me is it time. It might not even be clear what the reason is. Because the Minchas Chinuch argues that if there's a moral responsibility to give somebody who worked for you a gift in addition to their salary, in the case of an Eved there is no salary, if it's a moral responsibility then what's the difference how the person came to work for you? Therefore the Minchas Chinuch says that if we're going with the Tanakh Kalimah's opinion that you only give this gift to one kind of an Eved, the kind who was sold by Besnin, then it's not a moral responsibility. If it's not a moral responsibility, it doesn't apply to us employing somebody today. That's the Minchas Chinuch's insight and explanation. And then he asks a question. Minchas Chinuch bleibt aber bei Akasha. The question he leaves off with is, the Rambam paskin doch as anok is neheges nor by machru bezdin. The Rambam says the only type of Eved who gets that gift is the one sold by the Bezdin, like the Tanakhama's opinion in the Gemara. Whereas it would seem that the Sefer HaChinuch <coughs> believes that you also give the gift to the slave who had sold himself into slavery. Slavery. Why do we think that? Because the Sefer HaChinuch is the one who says it applies to an employee today as well. The question the Minchas Chinuch has is, Does the Rambam 
It's most unusual that the Sefer HaChinuch would have a difference of opinion from the Rambam unless he specified exactly. Now, it looks to us like they have a different a difference of opinion. Because the Sefer HaChinuch says you give an employee a gift, and because the Rambam says the only kind of Eved who gets a gift is the one sold by Beisdin, we assume the Sefer HaChinuch doesn't agree with the Rambam. The Sefer HaChinuch is going with Rabbi Eloz's opinion and the, the, the Rambam with the Tanakhama's opinion. So the Rebbe is going to explain how there's no contradiction of Yehavi. Let's explain as follows. So what we're seeing is that there's clearly an opinion of the Tanakama that the only kind of Evid who deserves to get the gift when he leaves is the Evid sold by Bezden. There are pos two possible ways that we could understand why that is. Number one, one possibility is, Aleph, the Chiddush von Anoka is, as we have mined in the Ebed, was Machro Besen Hanik Tanik Loy. So the one way to look at it is, the Torah is introducing a new principle over here, that when you release an Ebed, you give him a gift. So the Chiddush is that you give an Ebed a gift. Which Ebed do you give the gift? The one that the based in sold. Of a Baldas, Enoch Boy Ella Chidushoi, is Bederach Memel, and he's talking Anoka about Mecher Atzmoy. So if the Torah introduces something to us which is, unusual, then we understand that the Torah is introducing that Chidosh and you can't expand it out to another Chidosh. So if the Torah is telling us that the slave who was sold by the base and deserves a gift when he finishes his service, it's only relevant in that case and cannot be applied to a different case, cannot be applied where the person sells himself. And if the Chiddush is unique only to the circumstance of the Chiddush, in other words, if the Torah only says that somebody sold by the Beistin is the person who gets the gift, we definitely can't expand it out to somebody who wasn't discussed in the Torah at all, i.e. a modern day employee. That's the one possibility. The Torah wanted us to add a gift to this person, it's only to this person. Or we could look at it the reverse. The Chiddush is nit vos anim kadurch besnim bakum tanoka. Maybe the possibility of he has not that the Torah is innovating that you give a slave sold by the Beistin a gift when he goes afterwards. No, loy veloy lemechel atzmoi. Maybe we look at it the other way that the Torah was saying, no, actually, you don't give the gift to somebody who sold himself. In other words, <coughs> the Torah kind of expects that it's the right thing to do to give an Ebed a gift when he finishes his service. And then the Torah's Mechadish introduces an exclusion. You don't give it to the man if he had sold himself into slavery. Now those two perspectives are going to make a difference to how we understand what's going on over here and whether or not we can apply it to an employee. If we go over the second view, which is, Everybody should get a gift, except that guy, because he sold himself into slavery. As I feel like the day, as by Meicher Atzmi is not talking anoka, can men abe funim din anoka by Mechrub Bezdin oplen and I find the refalen. So, if we go from this perspective and we insist, like the Tanakama does, that the person who sold himself as a slave doesn't get anything extra when he leaves, we could still expand the concept that the guy sold by Bezdin gets a gift to other scenarios. As Eich by Zezel and a gewisse chiv von Anoka, and we can understand that there's some responsibility to give other people some kind of a gift when they finish up the service. The only exclusion would be a person who got himself into slavery, who volunteered, who sold himself because of destitution. That's the only person who's excluded. But we could expand the halacha to include other scenarios, not a person selling himself into slavery. Seeing as the Sefer HaChinuch over here is speaking, he's not talking about the scenario of a person who sold himself as an Evan. Because that is not relevant in today's world, so it's not part of this conversation about employees. No vegan asochir. Instead, the, the Sefer HaChinuch was talking specifically about somebody you hired to work for you. Not a slave, but a worker, an employee. So, it is possible that even if the Sefer HaChinuch agrees with the Rambam, that actually we go with the opinion of the Tanakama, and a person who sells himself into slavery does not get Hanoka, still the Sefer HaChinuch could suggest that an employee who is not part of that exclusion still deserves a gift. He should still, it's the appropriate thing to do, moral consciousness, give him a gift. And so the Sefer HaChinuch does not have to be disagreeing with the Rambam. The Rambam was commenting specifically on a person who sold himself as a slave and the Sefer HaChinuch is talking about somebody who is employed. 
Als die zwei Pfanne mit dem Müll dann aus, ein Toll in die zwei Pfanne als Butter, was man kann sagen in dem Innen von Anok. So, to get clarity on these two approaches about whether or not it's an inclusion of this slave deserves a gift or it's an exclusion of that's the only kind of person who doesn't deserve a gift, let's try and understand what this Hanukkah is all about anyway. Why is it that when a person finishes up their service, we're talking about giving them some kind of gifts? So either you could say, Aleph sees Ageda von Scharpi Ula, it's part of the payment plan. This is Mashma von Gemora, which is what the Gemora seems to indicate when it says, Sochir Kari Rachmona, Mas Sochir Pulose Le Yoshev, Av Hai Pulose Le Yoshev. The Gemora says that there is this expression of Sochir being hired to work, and if a person is hired to work, and for whatever reason doesn't receive their salary, their heirs would receive their salary. So in a, in a similar way, the Hanukkah also would go to their heirs. That would imply So that would sound like the Torah is telling us, well, you wouldn't have expected this person to get a, a reward because he's already gotten his payment. So the first perspective would be, look, this person has already been paid if they're a Sakhir, or they've already worked off their years if they're an Ebed. They don't technically deserve more bonus presence now. The fact that the terrorist says, is a Kiddush. So that's the one possibility. And if it's a Kiddush, then we have to introduce it. Who gets this, this, uh, this gift? Only the kind of person who was sold by the Beznin. That's one possibility. But the other possibility is, base is a Gedda von Tzedakah. The gifts given to this Ebed are not part of his payment plan. It's a concept of charitable uh, gifting on behalf of the, of the employer or the owner. So here you've got a master. He's had this Ebed work for him for a period of time. Now he wants to acknowledge the fact that, wow, you did amazing things for me. I want to give you a gift. It's a form of tzedakah. If you go with that, logic dictates... Well, if the mindset of Hanukkah is, I want to do something good to you, I want to add to your life, I want to give you a gift, then we'd need an explanation of why some people don't get that gift. And therefore, the exclusion would be the Chiddush. The person who sold himself as an Ebed, that would be the Chiddush. Because it's logical to us that typically an Ebed should get some kind of a gift afterwards. So now that we have these two possibilities, either the gift is part of the payment plan or it is a bonus because it's a form of charity, of tzedakah, of goodness on behalf of the Adon, what does the Rambam feel about this? What does the Rambam hold about this? Wie ist der Schitter von Rambam in dem? So, so you know where you'll find it? Look at how the Rambam orders the mitzvahs when he goes to the Sefer mitzvahs. Where does he put Hanoka relative to the laws of slavery or relative to the laws of tzedakah? So have a look, you will notice that the Rambam lists the mitzvah of Hanukkah giving this gift to the slave. He doesn't include it where he is listing the mitzvahs that are associated with an Ebed Ivri or Amma Ivriya. No gleich noch the mitzvah von Tzedakah. He lists it immediately after the mitzvah of Tzedakah. Von dem Samchelo to mitzvah Tzedakah. The context, the juxtaposition of this halacha next to the laws of Tzedakah is mashma. As the Fidas Rambam is Hanukkah in Geder von Tzedakah. That clarifies for us that the Rambam sees this bonus gift as a gesture, an overture, a form of Tzedakah from the Adon to the Eved. If that's the case, then then the Sefer HaChinuch and the Rambam are not actually at loggerheads. As the Torah is Mema'it Amoicher Atzmei Funa Yes, the Rambam does believe that this tzedakah is available to the slave sold by Basin, and it, the exclusion is the slave who sold himself. Still, we could use this principle that if a person is sold by Basin to be a slave, as mitzad muser tzedakah, the Rambam doesn't discuss it, but it would be logical to believe that the Rambam would agree with the Sefer Achinuch that because the motivation of Hanukkah is tzedakah, is morality, is goodness, it should extend to an employee as well. And so, bottom line, it sounds like you actually should give a gift to your employee when he's finished working for you.
Now that we have the Sefer HaChinuch suggestion that we should be gifting our employees something that aligns also with the Rambam's view, even according to the Tanakama in the Gemara, who holds that if somebody sells themselves into slavery, they don't deserve the gift. So the Rebbe says it's important for us now to highlight this lesson, seeing as the Sefer HaChinuch's lesson is practical in today's world and doesn't have any restrictions, even according to the opinion it says that Moichar uh, Atzmoy doesn't deserve Anoka. What's the lesson? If you hire somebody to work for you, and now the contract period ends, and this would be much more the case if a person dismissed an employee. If an employee resigns from his position, you don't have to give him a gift. As the halacha is clear that if an Ebed runs away or if he ransoms himself, he doesn't deserve this gift. However, if the employer is the one who lays off the employee, maybe because he's got too many workers and this person has become redundant. Or even if he's dissatisfied with a person who wants to fire him, there's a requirement in Aloka that you actually have to give a severance package. You have to give a gift. Seeing as we've now defined <coughs> that Anoka, Anoka fits into the category of Tzedakah, Tzedakah cannot include something you are required legally to pay the person anyway. So in other words, if you've got to pay a certain amount of salary, that's not going to inc- that's not going to satisfy the mitzvah of Hanukkah. There's no question if you owe a person salary, even if you have terminated their contract, you have to pay it. Any bonuses that were written into the contract between you and that person, you have to give him. Right? That's not yet part of the gift that you're required to give. Because none of that falls into the category of a form of tzedakah. And hanukkah is tzedakah. And it's actually irrelevant also how long the person was in your employ. Like the Sefer HaChinuch says, If it's a lengthy or even a short period of time. And it's regardless of whether you were satisfied with a worker, sign is because he brought brocha to your business, to your home, or he didn't. We are required, based on the Sefer Achinuch's instruction, to give a gift of recognition of tzedakah to our employees when they leave us, unless they resign. And it's got to be something relative to the time they were with us. And particularly if this person brought a lot of value to your concern, to your business or whatever it was, where the halacha requires that we're supposed to share with people relative to the bracha they brought to us. So then we've got to add to the gift that we give them in line with the kind of bracha that we got thanks to them. It's a really practical, intriguing lesson about how to treat our employees and it also applies spiritually too. The exact same principle applies in spiritual terms. The Rebbe's father explains in his insights to the Gemara Kiddushin, as by an Ebed Ivri's door, nor moichin de katnos, that one of the things that defines a person as an Ebed Ivri and why they land up in this mess is because they have limited intellectual resources, an immature intellect. On the river, Therefore explains Reb Levick that when the slave is freed, you actually have to empower him, not just give him a gift in the sense of, you know, like a gift voucher or a, what, a watch, whatever people traditionally give as gifts. You actually have to give him a gift of a more mature appreciation and understanding of the world, particularly of the Ibishna. On the far as the term of by Anoka di Draiminim says the Reb Levik that that's actually why when the Torah suggests what should comprise this gift, you're supposed to give from your flock, from your granary, 
from your wine. Three things because there are three elements of intellect, Chachma, Bin and Das, which are alluded to in these three areas. And it's the responsibility of the Adon to empower, to, to, to teach, to inspire this individual now to have a broader insight in their mind. Now, the relationship that is represented by a master and a servant is also reflected in the, re the relationship between a teacher and a student. Great example the Gemara gives us. Rabbi Yochanan was battling to work out a particular issue in Halach. He said anybody who could clarify for him, he was going to act like a servant, like an ever to them. I'm going to carry their clothing to the bathhouse. Which is obviously similar to the kind of uh, behavior that an Evid would do to a, to a, a turn master. So this is the, the student now becoming like the Evid to the teacher. So therefore, Dr. Ravisin, just like the master has to know you owe a gift to your slave when he goes free, the teacher has to know as a Musgeben and Talmud and Noka that part of the responsibility of teaching is to gift the student in other words, you can't be satisfied as a teacher to bring a person to a limited, immature understanding and appreciation of Debishter. Now, you have to teach a person in such a way that when they come into their own, when they mature, or get away from them and move off from the teacher, the student has to walk away with a full mature insight that the teacher himself already has. Let's make that simple. In The responsibility of a teacher, a rabbi, educating others, is not just to tell them what to do, but to give them a thorough, meaningful understanding of what it's about, why we do these things. Even if that means that you have to review the information multiple times with the student until it's clear, until the person truly absor absorbs and understands it, that's the responsibility of a Rav. So in other words, what's going to happen is you're going to review, you're going to review, you're going to teach. Eventually, the, the student's going to open his eyes and say, wow, this is amazing. I understand something I've never understood before. Relative to the Talmud, it's a great revelation. Relative to the, to the teacher, it's this is like a beginner's. But then there are going to be certain things that might go completely over the head of the student. So something that for the, for the teacher is going to require massive understanding, well, the teacher can say, I'm not required to give this to the students. not my responsibility, right? There's a, just like the, the employer has to pay a salary, the salary has to be a, a relative to the work that the employer is doing. So I have to teach relative to the capacity of the student, even relative to my own capacity. I don't have to share with that student things that I myself am, you know, it's difficult for me to understand and process. So therefore the Torah adds that beyond the salary, there's a concept of tzedakah, there's a gift that you give your employee slash student as well. Als tzedakah, aber ob mitten the correct <coughs> moral approach of a, of a teacher to the student. The real charitable way of teaching is that you totally dedicate yourself to the student and you work with the student to the extent that the student is able to appreciate the depth of the teacher's insight and wisdom. Any information, understanding, insight, knowledge, wisdom that the teacher has must eventually filter through to the student. So we can apply this also to the work that we do to reach out, to draw closer those individuals who are still immature in their Torah and mitzvahs. Men can mean, and we could easily excuse ourselves and say, This person is still a beginner in their Judaism. You know, I'm going to learn with this person what he can relate to right now. We'll learn the parasha, we'll learn basic halachas, things that are relevant to a beginner. So, says the Torah, that's not the right approach. 
As a bald Arizona at Talmud, the fact that this person, Bashkoch Prat, is landed up being your student. Even if he became your student because he learned one letter from you, as the Mishnah Prikavis tells us. The Mishnah says that now defines you as this person's primary teacher. And therefore, you have to gift him as well. You cannot satisfy yourself with just getting away with the basics. You have to work with this person to the point that they eventually reach your spiritual level, your level of knowledge and insight. Ba'as doing our avoider, which is represented by the slave working six years as an Evid Ivri did, is the shis in the shis alpha shin dava alma, which represents the six millennia of the world as we know it. That will motivate for us to experience, just like the slave went free in the seventh year, that we should go into the freedom of the seventh millennium, the messianic age. And then the Eibishter will fulfill for us, as he requires of us to fulfill for others. Then not only will he give us the reward we earned from our efforts, the salary for our investment during the course of the Golos, they even give us gifts that are beyond that. The greatest divine revelations, which are so profound, they are a kind of tzedakah from Hashem. Because they are exponentially beyond what we would have achieved through our efforts. And that will happen in the seventh millennium, the time of absolute Shabbos, absolute rest, absolute revelation should happen immediately.